Check this out, guys. This is the Sushi Burger here at Alameda Night Market, which is one of the most popular street food spots in Los Angeles. Seriously, every time I go to a sushi restaurant now, I gotta ask the chef, can you make me a sushi burger? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Steve from Rockstar Eater coming to you with another rockin' episode. And I am out here in downtown Los Angeles on Main Street because I'm gonna be revisiting a spot that I went to recently. Maybe some of you guys have seen my other episode when I was at the Alameda Night Market, which is one of the most popular night markets in Los Angeles. I didn't get to try as much as I wanted to because there were so many food spots in there. It was just so exciting. So what I'm gonna do in this episode is I'm gonna finish out this tour by showing you some of the craziest street foods that you can find in this market. So what I'm gonna do today is focus on more of the creative foods that I was able to find last time, but I'll show you this time. So if that's what you're into, then you've come to the right episode. So stick all the way to the end so that you can see this amazing street food experience here in downtown LA. And also if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And I am here right when the market opens at 5 p.m. on Sunday. Oh yeah. This night market has been open for less than a year and it's already become one of the most popular night markets that you can find in Los Angeles. And I'm here on a Sunday, they open at 5 p.m. and it's in a parking lot. So you'd have to street park and then you would uh, come into the parking lot and there's at least 20 different food spots. So I'm gonna complete this because there's also really other cool stuff that you gotta check out here that you can get to eat last time. All right, first spot. We are here at Tacos El Champ. Oh yeah, here we go. Starting off with some tacos. They're grilling all this chorizo and we got some steak too. I think that's carne asada. Yeah, all right, classic Mexican. I love it. Oh, it smells so good, guys. Nothing like starting off your street food tour with some delicious, famous tacos here. When a taco stand fresh makes their tortilla, presses it down, you know you have gone to a pretty good taco spot. Yes, everything is fresher. It goes on the grill. Onion, cilantro, some salsa, guac. And thankfully, most of these food stands have places to sit, but before I do so, cannot forget, onions, jalapeno, and what is this? Let me see, oh, beans. Awesome, isn't it? These tacos are about $2 each, which is pretty reasonable. First Street Tacos is very common pricing, I would say. They're, they have a few different flavors that you can get up there, but I decided to get two of their most popular flavors, which is beef, carne asada, as well as the chorizo. This is so stuffed. Wow, there's like so much meat and so much guac in here, and they do give it to you in this paper wrap, which makes it a little bit cleaner to eat, I would say. So the way that they put the meat in is that they dice it very finely. So you're tasting very thin pieces of carne asada in there. And I'm so thankful that they put so much of that guac in there. It is like a very rich, very like saucy taste, which is so amazing. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the beef, it's good. But I think this one is the one I'm most looking for because the chorizo looked amazing on that grill. Yeah, I think out of these two, chorizo is definitely the way to go. If you love that sausage flavor tacos, especially a big taco with so much of this guacamole sauce on it, this is your taco. I think it's worth it. For $2, they really do give you quite a big piece of taco. Yeah, I heard this is really the place you gotta be. Tacos El Champ. All right, next spot, El Sacachon. This is the place you wanna go to for the hot dogs. These are the famous hot dogs that Los Angeles is known for. It's called LA Danger Dog. It's kind of a Mexican style hot dog with the bacon wrapped around it and they grill it with all these different onions and then you can also put pepper in it. I'm definitely gonna get one because this is the definition of LA street food, at least for hot dogs. 
This is kind of a unique way that they made it here, but taste-wise, I think it's going to be pretty familiar. This is definitely the hot dog that you need to get if you want to experience hot dogs on the streets of Los Angeles. I'll tell you that. Other than the Dodger dog at Dodger Stadium, this is the one you got to go with. Oh man. Wow, it's good. You're not gonna walk away here with clean hands. So just warning you, it's uh, pretty much like your American hot dog, but like I said, done LA style. Yeah, it's not the healthiest thing in the world to eat, but I don't eat it that often. So every once in a while, I enjoy it. And just to let you know, if you wanna spice it up, look at that red pepper, oh baby. Yeah, I think it's gonna be really hot. <coughs> Yeah, I gotta take it easy on that one. I'm just kind of a wimp when it comes to spicy food. <laughs> I noticed that there are some spots that are missing from last time I came here versus this time. Most of it will remain the same, but you'll see some difference here and there. So just letting you know that it's not always gonna be uh, these exact 20 uh, food spots. You know what I'm in the mood for? Some barbecue. This is a spot you gotta go to, Natty's Grill. Look at that, they got beef teriyaki, chicken teriyaki, spicy pork, even Korean barbecue. Oh yeah, I'm so doing it. This is like my dream street food meal right here. Looks like it's done. Look how perfectly grilled it is. I am so excited. Check this out guys. So for $13, this is what you get. This is their Korean barbecue ribs. I think I'm the most excited to eat this one out of all the ones I've had so far. It comes with some greens as well, so yes, it does have some health alongside of it. So I guess it's appropriate to begin the meal by eating some veggies. I gotta get my vegetables. Whoa. That tastes like something out of a Korean restaurant. I'm not joking, it really does. That kind of like that sweet, vinegary spicy flavor wow seriously eating into these vegetables i really feel like i ate something out of a korean barbecue restaurant wow but now i want to see if the korean barbecue here actually does taste like something out of a korean barbecue restaurant as well whoa whoa whoa, whoa. dude I, I think this is by far the best thing i've had here at this market <laughs> Oh, it was like, ah, it's like touching me. Comfort food. It really does taste Asian. I mean, this stand is not owned by Korean people, but still, they make some of the most rockin' Asian slash Korean barbecue I've had as street food. I think this is probably the first time I've ever had any kind of uh, Korean barbecue street food of any kind where they fresh make it, you know, it's good to go. And that's one of the cool things about this market is that Pretty much almost everything is made to order. So yes, it's gonna come out fresh. Tastes just like ordering in a brick and mortar restaurant. This one is pretty killer. You gotta get it. It's like really, one, one, like top three recommendations here. So yeah, guys, look out for Pedro. Seriously, he makes some of the best food here at Alameda Night Market. This is totally worth the drive here. Just for Pedro's Natty's Grill. Remember that. That barbecue spot made me so, so happy. I think if I ended the night right now, I'd be good to go, but I still gotta check out a few more spots, such as this one. This uh, place that makes Mexican style sushi, it is crazy. You see, here's the menu. Look at all the sushi rolls that they have here. You can make it into a hot Cheeto roll. Pretty much you pay this price and then it's, it's this right here. But what I'm also gonna do is the sushi burger for $15, not on the menu, but that's how much I heard it costs. Miguel is gonna be making the sushi today. Yeah, this little mini sushi bar they got here. Yep, avocado, celery, rice, spicy tuna. I have never had a sushi burger before. This is gonna be the first time I'm it. trying it. Oh, I'm gonna love it, eh? Okay. So it goes into flour, into the egg wash, and into the panko. Yeah, it's deep fried. Okay, now I see what he's trying to do. Woo! So it's gonna be uh, crispy, almost like a tempura burger in some ways. 45 seconds, that's it, then it's done. Oh, golden crispy. I feel like I'm in uh, Japan right now trying some Japanese street food. You can do either spicy tuna or crab meat. I'm gonna go with spicy tuna today. That's kind of a little bit more my thing. 
Definitely it's going to add a little bit of that kick of heat to it. Woo. Oh man, that, that spicy tuna is like the burger on the patty on top of it. That is really one of the most creative street foods that you'll find in Los Angeles. I mean, by any restaurant standard, it's very creative as well because I've never even seen a Japanese restaurant that makes this. I mean, I'm pretty sure maybe somebody has, but I personally have not seen it. I am so excited to try this because this is like Japanese food really reinvented. Okay, I'm convinced. This sushi burger is like one of the greatest creations of LA street food I've ever had. I didn't even think it was going to work, but it is so awesome. It totally works. Just think of all your favorite things about eating at a Japanese sushi restaurant, like the rolls, the tempura, maybe even throw in some of that lettuce inside with avocado. And then it all comes together in one big hearty bite. This is really like one of the most feel good, quote unquote, sushi dishes that I've had. I think Japanese restaurants now really need to put the sushi burger on the menu because it is really going to be one of the most revolutionary things in Asian and American cuisine. And they also have quite a bit of rolls here. I'm not going to leave without trying this one. The Hot Cheetos roll. Check this out. Chopsticks. Very authentic experience. It pretty much tastes like a California roll that you would order in most sushi restaurants. But what makes it different is that the outer crunch, which kind of tastes like tempura crunch or flakes in some ways, it's kind of spicy. So yes, this is like a semi-spicy California roll and you don't need soy sauce with it because they put so much of this spicy mayo and eel sauce over it that it tastes so fabulous. Yeah, just the way it is already, you're good to go. Honestly, before I came here, I didn't even know if the sushi was gonna be good or not. You know, you're gonna kinda have your doubts when you go to like street foods and stuff. But man, this sushi is actually as good as some Japanese sushi restaurants I've been to in LA. As you can tell, it is getting pretty dark. Now it is a night market, oh yeah. I feel like eating some donuts. I heard this is the place you gotta go. Crazy donuts. This is the menu right here. You see, you can get three for five, stick of four for six. What do you think? Do you think I should get donut stick of 10 for 12? Yep. Yeah, let's do it. Can't go wrong. So guys, this is Iris right here. Oh, hello. Hello. Stick of 10. No way, that's the whole stick? Yep. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I'm so excited. So today we have, these are Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh -huh. These are our strawberry, funfetti, red velvet. Our best seller is chocolate Oreo. This is August Spice. And then we have vanilla. There's a stick of tech. All right. That is so awesome. Look at that. <laughs> This is so fun. This is almost like a donut necklace in some ways. I want to like wear it on my neck. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think uh, what you're supposed to do is, uh, I mean, you can take it off, but then I think what I'm going to do is just bite it off the stick. Almost like eating a corn on a cob, but with, uh, with uh, donuts on it. I think I ate the birthday cake donut. Tastes like a cupcake in some ways. I like it because it's bite-sized. You can totally fit everything in your mouth when you bite into it. And it's super soft. And once again, they fresh make it here. So all of this is fresh made, not store-bought. Five or six different good flavors that you can choose from on a stick. So yeah, definitely get this because this is one of the funnest and also tastiest things that you can have here at the night market. Ah, moving on to the next spot. I'm almost done. I'm getting full. Yes. Here, how about this one? Antojitos El Primo. All right, here's Sergio. He's going to be making the famous mango. Yeah, I can't describe what it's like yet, but you'll see when he's finished with this. Oh, yeah, he's carving it. It's going to turn into some sort of a, I believe it's a flower-like shape. 
What kind of sauce is that? Chamoy. Chamoy? Okay. Yeah, I've had that before. Chamoy. Tahin. Tahin? Yeah. Okay, finish it off with a squeeze of lemon. That's it? Okay, let me see. All right, that's it, guys. Okay, Sergio is now going to make the spiral potato, which is another show in of itself. Oh, okay. It's almost like a potato slinky. Once he spreads this out, it's going to be a long stick of potatoes. And then in the oil it goes. I'm not going to eat it raw, definitely. I want to eat it fried. Yeah, a lot of things are going to go on top of it. Mayo is just one. And ketchup, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Ketchup on potatoes. Sense. Yeah, mustard. Cheese. Nice. Hot Cheetos. <laughs> and hot Cheetos, okay. Yeah, cheesy, salty, ketchupy, everything. So it is very challenging to find seating at this Alameda night market, especially as the night goes on. More people are going to flood this place, so you're just going to kind of have to be on the watch out for it. Alright, why don't I start with this? It's no joke. When all the toppings go on it, it falls off the potato, so you see? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to eat that, but I'm going to just try to focus on what's on top of the potato. Wow. I have no complaints, it's delicious. It's not as crispy as I thought it was going to be. I would say it's, a, it's more soft. Yeah, that's the word, soft. And everything that goes on top gives it the flavor. Like the mustard, the ketchup, hot Cheetos, makes it a little bit spicy. I love the fact that they put all this cheese on top of it. This is like your dream loaded spiral potato. I don't even know how I'm gonna eat this flower mango. This thing is so big and stripping because everything is on this one as well. Mm. Oh yeah, that's definitely a very Mexican inspired mango dish right there. It tastes sweet, salty, and spicy at the same time. Oh, and sour too. Yeah, I, I remember they put in all that lime juice, wow. I would say that the flavors are very intense. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm really into the sour, spicy taste. I'm still kind of getting used to that because I've had some variations of the sauce before. But I definitely love the sweetness of that mango. The mango itself is super sweet. That's a big plus. I think I have room to do one more. Why don't we do dessert? Yeah, we always have to end with dessert, right? This funnel cakes looks very interesting. Oh yeah, funnel cakes, LA. I decided to get the caramel because that's the best seller here. I'm so excited. I never knew how they made funnel cake, so I'm learning something new today. Wow, it's done. That was pretty quick. I think that's powdered sugar they're putting on top. Wow, when was the last time I had a funnel cake? I don't even remember. Oh, I love cheesecake. I'm not complaining. You scoop the ice cream. Vanilla. Vanilla. Hard whipped cream. Yep, yeah, gotta finish it with whipped cream. And I did want to mention that next to the funnel cakes is this very popular churro spot called Churros Peter. I want to try this. Last time I saw this, I was too full. Let's do it this time. So I guess that's Peter right there. And uh, he is, uh, yeah, he fresh makes these for every customer. I think I've tried more food this time around than I did last time. Wow, I wasn't really expecting this, but okay. I'll roll with it. Whoa! Oh. Dude, I'm so glad I got this flavor. He said it was the most popular one. It is so mind-blowing. I think this is like one of the best desserts I've had in a long, long time. You have to come to this funnel cake place. This is really one of the most rocking desserts I've had on the streets of LA. Totally mind-blowing. I would come back just to eat this one. These churros, uh, you can get a plain or you can dress them up with all these whoop, toppings like chocolate, caramel, strawberry. Yeah, that's the way I roll. Mm -hmm. Very crispy. 
And it's like the perfect cakey texture inside. Once again, you could have the churros plain. You can put it in the sugar, which is a very traditional way to do it, or you can glaze it up to the max, just like this. Alameda Night Market has a little bit of something for everybody. If you're asking me what are my personal favorites here, I definitely love that Korean barbecue bowl. The sushi burger was also pretty awesome. And that funnel cake, wow. It's pretty solid, so remember that. If you guys want to try some of the most creative, rockin' Los Angeles street food, it's here at the Alameda Night Market in downtown Los Angeles. So don't uh, miss out on this place because this is really one of the most exciting night markets that you can be at in LA. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this episode of Rockstar Eater. If you enjoy what I'm doing here on the show, give me a thumbs up. And also comment on the section below because if you've been to this Alameda Night Market, I want to hear what do you usually like to get here at this place. And finally, please subscribe because more of these food and travel adventures are coming out in the next few weeks. But I hope you have a rockin' day today, folks, and I'll see you all in the next food adventure.